Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, what's up? Not much. You? Uh, not much, I guess. All right. Um. Yeah. I already have your VOD. I'm going to share my screen. All right. All right. Cool. All right, can you see it? Oh uh, yeah. All right, let's do it. Um, yeah. It's um. Well, I don't know how to start this. Is this um? Is this an online game or offline game? Uh this is in a battle arena, so online. Online. Yeah, I figured. Um, well, yes. Uh, I saw in your description and your goals that you wanted to be a top ten player in your region. Could you uh, uh can you tell me what your region is? Uh Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Okay. Okay, I I know a little bit about Michigan. All right. Um yeah, well I already I already saw that you that you would like to call out your habits. And uh if I see something else, of course I will let you know, right? Yeah. Yeah, and also if you got any any other questions about the game or like something I explained, just uh just let me know as well. All right. Alrighty, sounds good. Alright, cool. Let's start. Try to go for it again. Yeah. Nice edge guard. I don't see I, I don't see a lot of people actually getting edge guards against Violet. Oh. After finishing the game, I'll explain some things. All right, that's fair.
Yeah, he tried to do too much. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate. All right. Uh, let's just start rewatching the first stock. Uh, not not really a lot of things to mention here. You get your combos, blah blah. I I, I was still. I mean, important thing is that you didn't take a lot of damage. And you still do the stock, right? There's yeah. there's a few things that could be a little bit more optimized, but I don't think it's worth mentioning it. Like All at right. the end, you do the stock, like whatever. Like he made some mistakes, took advantage of it, but then, like after the stock, is where let's say the game actually starts. He uh he starts like mixing up with your combos. He starts like reading your movement. I don't, I don't really know if I should call it a habit, because I don't really think it is. I used to think that, like, he just starts punishing your game plan in a specific, right? Yeah. Because this entire situation where he goes back, like, he starts hitting you, and then, like, you try to respond with something. I really hate these kind of interactions, because basically, um, you start getting damage. You start getting hit because of one hit, conf one miss confirm, right? You miss this. So after that, you just, like, start getting a lot of damage. Then, like, you start getting disparate, approach. Then he starts, like, getting you with some small hits. But they still make a lot of damage, right? Yeah. Then after that, he just keeps getting grabbed. He keeps challenge challenging your, your spacing with his grabs. And then another situation like the other... You miss something so so small. This this is kind of like the only thing I would like to talk about in this situation. For me, there is literally no point on going for that confirm. What is back here going to do for you that fair is not going to do? Like that that's just my question, right? If you yeah. want to do it, it's fine. But if you do it, make sure it works. Cause because like you actually get another hit. And you could possibly be dead in here. You didn't die. That's a good thing. But again, it's not really because you didn't make a mistake. It is because he didn't know how to take advantage of it, right? Yeah. So if we're talking about optimal gameplay, this was actually pretty, pretty bad. Like, you know what will happen to me if I do that against Spargo? Fuck, I fucking die, right? Yeah. Like, I literally fucking die. So th those kind of things are not worth. In the first talk, it worked. It was actually in the same situation and position, so that's really funny. That's probably why you decided to go for it again. But you miss input it online or not, you did miss input. Yeah. So in my opinion, that's actually not worth it. That's just not worth it. Like what? Fair is actually faster than backer. It's like two frames faster. It only does like three three percent less, and it puts you actually in the same situation because they got the same angle. So. Yeah, I, I, there's actually no reason why going for it. Because at the end, backer is something you use to kill, right? Fair yeah. is the thing that you use for spacing or get damage. Like, I don't know. Like, I could tell you a lot of things of on why that backer is just not worth it. And of course, you go hit by it. So uh, that's your lesson, right? Um, yeah, for me, that's just not worth it. Then he almost got you with that. And then you keep repeating the same option in this situation. You just keep holding forward. It's not a bad thing because you're a pilot, so it doesn't really matter. But like every single time you are put in that situation at the ledge, you just keep jumping or approaching with something else, right? Like you decide that it's a good time to get off the ledge. And of course, he keeps punishing it. Now he learned that every single time you do something in, in like as in spacing, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I do it too. That's actually yeah. one of my biggest habits. That every single time I do something at the ledge, I decide that I would just run out, like run back at the ledge, right? Because, well, people usually don't go for punishes like that. Like in Zero Suit, it might not really work because Tether Grab is big. So it's kind of like the only thing that can challenge your spacing on your dash away, right? Yeah. So I will, I will say that this specific situation like in Zero Suit is not really a good idea just because like the grab, right? And that's usually how she punishes, like, spacing characters, blah, blah, like, just going for the grab, because even if you try to space it, the grab has more range, right? That's that's what they like to do. So, again, situation repeats, until he decides to go for an edge guard. Another big, big mistake you can do against Violet. Going for edge guards against Violet is basically just, hey, man, get back to the stage for free. 
That's basically what it means, right? So this yeah. was like a really big mistake by him, and they used Gwen back to the stage. But he just did a really bad thing, which is trying to punish his jump, right? I mean, not really bad, not really like super bad. It's still like something you try to do is online, so you never know what might happen. And you didn't die for it, so that's a good thing. Yeah. You try you try to go for it again, then it's a really good thing. Then after that, you it wasn't really a big mistake. You just try to kill, you were at 138. If you got it, you would have taken a stock at 66. So uh, it was worth risking it, in my opinion. So like not gonna mention anything about it. You try to go for it again and you get the exact same punish. So oh, next God. time, you should not go for it. So now you know that it works. It's just about like it's just about like understanding why it works, right? It it worked once because uh he decided to recover with down B, right? And you cut his down B. So but the, like the two times you went for it when he was on the ledge and you were expecting a jump, I guess. Like, it didn't work, and you got the same punish. There into jab, right? Yeah. So just be careful of that. Like, now you should know what will happen if you do it again. See? Exact, exact same habit. You try to go for back air, then you try to go for it again, and the next thing you do is, is dash away to the ledge again, so you try to space like like the other interaction that you go grab for, right? So another thing to have in mind. Then you then you use this D, I guess. You were too scared of like actually do something. Of course, yeah. um like simple, simple mistake, right? You just didn't jump before you up B and then it was too late. Like whatever. You did the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. You try to go for the grab and then immediately dash back to the ledge because you feel safe there. He got you with a grab, same thing. Then, well, this mistake. You normal go up a lot. It's like, it's actually really lucky that you didn't get any, like, any of those punishes. Alright. Because 8, like, 8 out of 10, you normal get up. That was good. Could kill you there. He's risking it too much. People should not edge guard pilot. Not with serious suit with such small headboxes. And then he tries to go for the same thing. That was just so bad, dude. That was just so bad by him. It, why would you do that? There's literally no reason. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So two habits. You always dash back to the ledge whenever you uh you feel free to do to do so. Of course, against serious suit it doesn't work. Um, uh, so, uh, unless you're playing a really fast character, someone that really knows about it, or a character with a tether grab, I would say that's dangerous. If not, keep doing it, it works, it works for me, so not really, not, like, not really a bad thing. And then, um, your neutral get-up habit, like I said, is, like, it's actually really fortunate that you didn't get hit by it, because he was actually trying to punish it, he just didn't get it.
Dead. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, there's a few things happening in this game. Uh, first thing I realized is that, uh, you like going for side B quite a lot. Uh, not really bad thing, but sometimes it is really punishable, and I'm going to explain why later, since All it right. happens to you. Another thing is that, I don't know if it's because it's online. Yeah, you can say that as an excuse, and I will accept it, because it has happened to me. But since the first game, you haven't get anything after Nair. Like, nothing. Like, you literally don't get anything. And every single time you, like, get a Nair, you just, like, I could see that you just don't understand what's happening after nair gotcha. let's look at this like like why didn't you just like react to it like it was gonna be a true combo yeah maybe you wanted to do that which didn't work and it's also really hard now you try to grab grab after nina 77 like that's the thing that makes me understand that makes me realize that you don't really put attention to what's happening right all right why would you why would you try to grab a 77 that's the thing and then after that, this is a really funny interaction because, in my opinion, this Gazia player is not good at all. If he was good, he would have killed you, like, ages ago. And in this situation, it is really funny to me because you just keep getting hit, but it is actually for a really stupid reason. Because now, I don't know if it is because you realize that you weren't getting any punishments after Nair, that you actually try to keep getting Nairs, right? You got punished, well, not really for the Nair, but you went for Nair, he shielded, then you guys straight with something else. You decided to jump, I don't know what was your idea, it could have been a lot of different things. Jump into getting away, getting center stage, or jump into another Nair, right? So basically, I would like to say that you got punished because you try to jump and do something after jumping, right? Yeah. You recovery, blah, 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 then after that, you decide to go for another Nair, just like you did in the last situation, then you get punished again. Then in that situation is really normal. Then uh then yeah, you're out of that situation. And then the same thing happens to you. He trades your F2 with a jab, and then you jump again. Right? Just like in this interaction. He trades with a jab, then you jump, he hits you with a jab. Then the next interaction is basically just trading F2 with jab once again, and then you jumping out of disadvantage and then getting jab again, right? Yeah. So that's why this situation is really funny to me because I could see that he was just pressing A and you let it happen. Why? Because you decided that jumping after F2 was a better idea, right? If you see him trying to challenge your like your hits with a jab, it, it's I, I would say that it's common for the for the other player to keep going for that hit, right? Because let's be honest, Violet doesn't really have anything in this situation. Yeah. Like Violet is really good in this situation because he's not gonna get gimp. And he can actually kill you for it. But if you keep trying to challenge someone with your with your hits constant like constantly, then it might not work, right? Because yeah. Violet is just lower than other characters. So that's why you gotta wait until someone decides to throw out a hit that will actually be punishable, right? What yeah. happens if you shoot it, his jab and then try to punish it both times? He wouldn't be in off stage, he wouldn't be dead. And then he was gonna be in higher percentages, right? That it's that simple. So yeah. it was basically just jumping here. Then other two side beasts. That's just really weird to me. Going for side beast in this situation is is quite unique. I actually never seen that. I'm not saying it's bad because you actually do a lot of things in this situation, right? Because side B get a lot of shields shield stun. Yeah. So I don't like I don't think it will be bad. I just think that it's something that's really hard to hit. And if you realize he was able to shield it twice, and yeah, he gets shield stun it and stuff, but do you really get something after it? No, you don't. You actually get hit for it. So another bad 
another good idea, but execute it, I guess. And I could see that you use like punishing ledge with that in case they jump or stuff like that. Um itch guarding. I mean less trapping as pilot is actually uh not so hard. I was just it's it's pretty simple. In both of these situations where he normal get ups, uh you were in a long distance. It means that someone that knows a little bit about pilot knows what's coming. Side B, right? Because if you jump into fair, you only got one frame to punish it, which is not really going to work. Same with back air, right? Remember, like we said, that back air is pretty much the same thing as fair, except mm -hmm. for like two frames difference. So, I mean, I play Violet, that's probably well understand it, but if but if I see Violet in here, I know that he cannot do anything besides side B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I guess it was really easy for him to notice what he, like, what he had to do in order to not get punished by something. If he rolls, he gets punished. If he attacks it up, he gets punished. He's not able to shoot. If he jumps, he gets punished. So, it's unique. It's actually a good idea, but the only thing that makes it not a good idea is the fact that's predictable. It's the fact that you that you know what's coming, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah. Like, it's good, but not as good as in my, as my MIC on paper. So, he decides to go for normal get up twice, and then, uh, I don't know if that was a snack bag or something, but then you got punished for it. So I would say that in both of these situations where, like, you actually condition him to do something because you're in this situation, then in my opinion, it might be a good idea to just, uh, like, catch his jump or normal get up with Nair. Nair is usually the best thing you can do. Why? Because if you get a Nair when he jumps, if you get a Nair when he normal get up, it, it gives you, the, like, the free... Fair confirm of stage. That's yeah. what I usually do, and you know it was works. And even if he rolls, Nair's not really laggy, so you can just get a grab uh, or a side B actually, or a, like a dash attack, right? That's yeah. usually how you like you want to edge guard with Violet. And then if there's something different that you want to do, you can just like jump retraining back back here. It will always hit. Nice. Okay, uh, well, there's two things I would like to talk about in this situation. Uh, Nair, grab. That was not as bad, because he actually thought you were going to dash attack him, so that was good. You go for Nair. Oh, a good mix-up, I'll say. Then you try to get the up B. Another good mix-up, I like it. Then you try to go for back here. You got the hit. Really good stuff. I like it. But, as a pilot player, you gotta understand that the best thing you could possibly get is up B, right? Like, yeah. that's... That's, that's kind of like the maximum you could get as a punish. Up he does 18%, plus another hit, it, 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 it does nearly 30 or 40%, right? And of course, he was at the ledge. So he was possibly going to die, you got rage. So it was just a really good idea. So in my opinion, getting up B, so you can kill them off the sides, is always the best idea. So it, this was a really good idea, because up B was going to get him with a lot of damage, and he was in the air, so why not? But then in this situation, I'm not saying backer is bad, but as a pilot player, I know that my priority is get an up B, right? So yeah. if you see him in this situation, your priority should be get an up B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So instead of like just jumping and then mashing a back air that it basically hit because he went for down B, then why not try to get another up B, right? Since he was uh since he was air drifting here and you knew that he was gonna land in front of you, right? So another up B wouldn't be in a good situation. And well, like, talking about optimal game plan, uh, I would say that's the best thing you could possibly get. Like, even if he didn't go for down beat, you could have just shielded and then, like, up beat any of his aerials. And, like, since he down beat, then you could have just get it for free, right? And that would have given you, like, a lot more than that thing. And then, uh, another situation, it's the, de the side beat. You know that side beat got a lot of shield stone, right? Mm -hmm. And people usually don't try to... don't, don't succeed at punishing it and you try to spot dodge 
Um, yeah, you try to be safe, but again, it's something matchup specific. Why would you spot dodge something that you know that you are not gonna get punished for? You know what I'm saying? He tried to go for grab, and then he tried rolling, but you try to punish him right after your spot dodge. And then kind of like the situation just went away and the situation is resetted. Now you play neutral again and then you lost the neutral. So in my opinion, after you get this hit, you should be aware of what's going to come, right? Like you gotcha. can see that he hasn't adapted to it. The two the two other interactions where you went for side B, he just didn't do anything. And you, bas and you basically got punished because your mistake after side being someone's shield, right? So you yeah. should be aware of this, that he's possibly going to try to grab. It's online, and he's not a really good player. So the chances of him getting the, like, the right timing for you to get punished are just actually just so fucking low, right? So, like, you don't have to worry about it. It, it wouldn't be different, because if it was zero suit, then her tether grab would have grabbed you, right? But it's, it's Gazuya this time, so Gazuya's not really going to do anything unless he gets the timing. But again, chances are really low. So in this situation, in my opinion, it would be better to just try to get a hit right after, like, you get the side B, right? Because you know that you're safe. Even try to get a down smash so you scare him. You could possibly get a shield break or, in a specific, just try to get a hit, right? It doesn't matter. Like, like you do side B because you're trying to get a hit with side B. What happens when you don't get a hit with side B is a really good situation because it, it, like, it leaves someone with a lot of shield stun. So you might get a hit after that, right? Gotcha. So it's not like, oh, I went for side B and I miss, and then I use a spot dodge, and then I play neutral again, and then I lose. Because side B is actually a really complicated move to hit, and you make it work. It's, it's actually really funny, but you don't really take advantage of the main thing side B does for you, which is giving you a free opening like this, right? So uh, just be more aware of that. All right. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Aimbot. Damn. Good. Mm -mm. Another situation where you could have taken a lot more damage. You know that your Nair is going to put him in the situation where he either jumps or techs, right? So whether you try to go for another Nair immediately, if, it, if there was a, like a chance that he could tech and then going for up air into up B into another combo, right? So this is just talking about optimal game plan. Not, not a bad thing to do, but of course, instead of 35, it couldn't be like 80%, 70%. Gotcha. So just another thing to mention. Nice. You cheese him, and that was really good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, is your other VOD ready? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. And then I have another one that's pretty much almost done as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if we'll have time to do three of them, but this one for sure. All right, uh, I can't some wolf. Interesting. That's a hard matchup. Not easy. Yeah, I'm right. pretty sure I lost this game. And I believe it was from something that I did very wrong at the end. Alright, let's see.
Yeah, this match was complicated. You gotta play really slow. Damn. The moment you actually had to use side B, you just didn't use it. That was the perfect time to kill him with side B. He read your roll, didn't get a punish. Alright. Uh there's not many things to mention in this in this stock since it's pretty much just you getting hit by wolf stuff. Some mistakes that I'm pretty sure you noticed already, kind of like the, like the thing that just happened. On uh, one or two nares that you also missed, so I'm not really going to mention it again. Gotcha. So, really simple. Mm-hmm. You don't seem to be really comfortable abusing Nair in these kind of situations. Like Aww. you're like you're right now, you're just trying to get a hit with your fair or back or something. Ooh, nice catch there. But well the main purpose with Violet, Violet is like Violet's Nair is basically what makes everything work, right? Like her yeah. Nair is the best thing you could you could do. So if you know how to like abuse that or optimize that, matches are gonna be a lot more complicated. The good thing about Nair is that it's not really something you use to punish. It's something that you, I, I mean, it's not really something that you use to like as an approach or something, but it's something you use as a punish, right? Because auto shoot punishing is so, so important in this game. One of the reasons why you stopped playing Joker and that is and decided to play Violet because he actually just got the Nair and it's those kind yeah. of situations, Nair is just like the best thing you could do. Kind of like that, right? Like he tried to punish you with an aerial, and then you went for back air. Uh, maybe a miss input, but that was the perfect time to use go for an air. Nair would have walked there. Nair is frame six, so it means that you can punish everything that's minus six on shield. And I'm pretty sure Wolf's Nair is minus six or something. And since he inputted up smash, it would have been a lot easier. Yeah, you could have get hit, but it was still gonna work, right? And yeah. just I'm getting a Nair at the ledge. It's kind of like taking the stock for free. Because you get Nair, then you get a fair, or you put it in center stage, and you get something else, right? That's why I say that Nair is a really important like tool in every single match, and not only this. What, what Wolf is going to be a lot more noticeable, because Wolf is a better character overall, and it forces you to do more optimal things. Yeah. See? Like, you used your Nair as, like, I really don't know what was that Nair. I'm guessing you try to approach with it, and then you just go punish for it. That's why Nair is like a good option as an out of shield punish. Yeah. Nice. You try to go for it. Hmm. Damn, I never seen that happening. Yeah, when I was playing with this person, we were very confused on why that happened. So I didn't think I had re grabbed as much, so I didn't think that was what it was. So I had no clue. Nah, nah, no, nah, it wasn't a re grab. It was just the game. I mean, up Violet's up B is quite weird in this situation. It's just, uh, I mean, yeah, 
Violet's Abby is kind of like yeah, it's like an aimbot, right? Where yeah. like if if you see like if the Abby like recognizes that you're trying, like trying, right? Because sometimes you're not really trying to do certain things. But like if the Abby thinks that you're trying to get a hit, so grab a like grab someone, it will most likely avoid the ledge, right? And vice versa. Like, even if someone is, like, in front of you, it got to be in a certain distance, so Abby starts prioritizing grabbing someone. Kind of like the Sirisu thing that happened, right? Like, the reason why, oh, yeah. like, this, like Sirisu got grabbed, it is because you were far enough to just, like, grab him, right? Because, well, Abby wasn't really gonna grab the ledge in this situation, right? It, I mean, it could have, but the thing is that Sirisu was in your way, right? But you're in a certain distance. You're in a perfect distance where, like, your upbeat now prioritizes grabbing the character rather than the ledge. It doesn't mean that you couldn't grab the ledge, right? It doesn't mean that. So I think the same thing happening here. Which, you go for upbeat in this situation. I, I Like, that was a good idea because you decided to gain a little bit more of hide and positioning by doing that, right? But then you try to go for down B too close to the ledge, but guess what? Also too close to the wolf, right? Right after using it, your second time using it, of course, the first time you use your up B is going to be a lot bigger since you do a little jump. So, uh, like, that could be the explanation for it. Because if you see your up B tries to touch the ledge, like, tries to, to touch the character, because your up B does not really. Because your. Let's say that your up B does not really. Like respects that the ledge is in front of it, right? Because yeah. I could see that it's not trying to grab the ledge. Because when Abby tries to grab the ledge, it looks like it's gonna grab it, and then it just didn't. It just doesn't stick. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this, but this time it looks like the Abby decided to just not grab it, right? Yeah. So I think that's what happens. It's a big mistake, unfortunate mistake. I wouldn't say that it was like it was bad. Like it could happen to anyone. But another thing to mention is that, like, you were so close to the ledge that going for another upbeat was worthless. Like, it, it like, yeah. I, I, like, I don't think, like, to avoid getting, like, getting that bullshit, like, you should just air dodge when you're so close to the ledge, right? Got or you. just, like, just let it go and then, like, try to recover low or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, big mistake. Not, like, by, by the game, not you. But there was there was a way to like to avoid it, right? So yeah. uh, I don't know. It, it like it's still pretty sad. And then uh, you just talk a little bit about the game. This situation was actually really smart. Yeah, you get the stock. But then after that, it's just you keep getting hit by wolf things, which is not a bad thing since this matchup is really hard. Yeah, then you just die early. Something I, I notice a lot is the same thing that happened with the Gazuya player, where you go hit by by something just because you try to jump in neutral. Because it happens to you again, right? Like, you get punished by those fares, like, five times in this game, because yeah. you try to jump. So, just another thing. Like, not really Wolf is specific, but just you is specific. Like, if you're in that situation, for Violet, since... Violet's moves come out really like really slow in the air. I would say that's better. You just like retreat back, roll, stay shielding, waiting for like like a response, right? Like by with a wolf player or anything, and they so you can punish it, right? Because yeah, like this situation is good for you since wolf. The main thing he does with that with that fair is goes you up. So like in this situation, well, well he is above you and he lands, and not be would have hit him like for free. So you want to do that instead of jumping, right? And then you jump, and then you go hit by it. It's just uh, just something normal. And then the unfortunate happens. Yeah, I think we got time for the last for the last vod. So if you All want right. to send it, that's fine. Yeah. This one, I think I don't remember if I won or lost this one. But I just know for sure that I'm not very comfortable with this matchup. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there a reason why? Uh, I believe this was either. Yesterday morning or two days ago. I'm not too sure. Yeah, but why you're why don't you like fighting K rule? Um I think it's because that right there with the super armor on the ballet. 
And then oh, I have a hard time getting um off the ledge as well. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Nice, you you finally made it. All right, so let's talk about every single time you go you go hit off stage. That's not a big problem. You get hit by something that got buffed, so not really bad thing. Uh, another thing that you need to have in mind is that you can punish K rule like that. Like if you try to land above K rule with a hit, it might not work. So it is better to just re like recuperate with uh with one of the platform or something like that to refresh situation, right? Because K good. rules are usually not gonna get hit, but that's much too specific. And uh, then in this situation, it's just really unfortunate, right? Because like. I don't know. Mm. I'm looking for a nice way to say it, but you really just you just don't think, right? You just don't yeah. think about the situation. Why why did you try to punish this if you see the air? Remember that a grab will always be a move, no matter what. Right? You get thrown off stage once again, then you get hit by the same thing in a different way. But it is basically just because you try to challenge him, you try to hit him while he is doing all of this shit, right? Yeah. And of course it's not working. You try to jump above him, another another side B. He gives you an opening, you didn't take advantage of it by approaching. Then you try to go for the same. No, this was actually the smartest thing. And this is the perfect example of what you have to do. Every single time you go hit by something, it is because you try to be aggressive. You try to counterplay this interaction, which is not really possible. Just, well, this interaction is just like that, right? It's not really good, but if you don't understand it, it might look really bad. Yeah. But this is kind of like the perfect situation. You understood that if you stayed at the ledge, nothing will happen unless he uh, overcommits into something bigger, kind of like punishing you off stage or something like that. And then you decided to just roll. Perfect thing. But guess what? You get punished again because you try to be aggressive. So this, this is a really good lesson for you. Don't try to be aggressive at the ledge. Violet right. is really good at the ledge, but this has to be with basic disadvantage state. Disadvantage is something so big in this game. Basically, you win games because of disadvantage, right? The better your disadvantage is, the better your matches are going to go because now you won't you won't die off stage, you won't die at the ledge, you won't die when you didn't juggle. I mean, if it's a really good player, of course you will die. But if he just keeps repeating the same process with neutral B then I could see that that's bad disadvantage. So uh, disadvantage, just to make it simple, is where you are in a situation, either it's off stage, less trap, or above someone, that doesn't really allow you to respond with something that you will usually respond with. Does that make sense? So yeah. basically what I'm saying is while you are disadvantage, it means that the other opponent is in advantage state, which means that in disadvantage, you have less options, and advantage state, you got more options. And what's in between? Between that is neutral, right? Where both mm -hmm. of you guys have the same amount of options and possibilities. It just depends on what character you guys are playing, what characters, like which stage and stuff like that, right? That's yeah. why, like, that that's like that's matchups, right? But like in a game when you're already playing, not talking about characters, there's three faces: neutral, which is that you guys have the same poss possibilities, then disadvantage. For you and him, for both, you guys have less chances and then advantage, which is the other thing. You have more chances, right? Yeah. So in this situation, if you try to challenge someone that is in advantage state while you are in disadvantage, it means that you will possibly lose because of the same reason I just told you about. Because you got less chances of actually getting a hit, right? There's yeah. no many there's no many characters that are able to just reverse the situation. Violet is really good at reversing it at the ledge and off stage. Why? Because upbeat. But he's not really at the at the position where he's like like able to be grabbed by upbeat. So you gotta find a lot like at, like different ways. But if you keep trying to play at the ledge while also trying to hit him with side B back here or something like that, it might not work because he's pulling out a win hitbox, like a hitbox yeah. that you will basically not hit and a win box that will just beat your attacks because it's active. It's known to come out. It's active already, right? So we don't like three things. Understand advantage and understand what you have to do. Basically escape that situation, right? Only as you can reverse it, but if he can't be reversed, then 
It's just uh, just roll like you did in this situation. We'll talk about the other, like, what comes after that after. Um, uh, understand why you can't do anything. And of course, uh, don't try to challenge something that's active, right? Yeah. Such as like, it's like when you got that item, like I forget the name of that item, but the item that like you touch and then you just get like launched away, right? And like the Rosalina, the Rosalina thing, that's an, also an item that if you approach, it grabs you and then like it launches you really far, right? It's yeah. kind of like that thing. You gotta, you gotta think about this move that way, that basically if you try to hit it or if you try to approach it, he would just grab you. It's like a black hole, right? Like it's not like there's not really something that you can do. Yeah. And then in this situation, it is uh you try to get a hit. Unfortunately for you, <laughs> it was bad because you try to do it, and of course you got intercepted by the by the platform. So not really a bad thing. You just uh I don't know, some mix of things. Then that was really good because now the, the hitbox was not active. You were able to challenge where you're near. So really good stuff again. Mm -hmm. Nice. Back All right, this is this is good to talk about. Um, in this situation, you would have get killed if it wasn't because he has stopped his move, right? So that yeah. was that was bad by him. He didn't recognize that you were gonna keep trying to hit him. So, but this is like the perfect example. If he kept this move active, you would have died. But since it wasn't active, you actually could get a hit, right? So yeah, that's basically how it works. If it's not active, you just go for a hit. If it is, like, just tr try to get to nurse station again. <clears throat> You're gonna use that nair at the ledge, like I said, against the Gazuya player. Nair in here would have just killed him for free. He keeps normal get upping every time. The good gotcha. thing about Nair is that it punishes everything. Gotcha. <laughs> Wait, oh, what? I don't remember that. All right. Oh, I think in this situation, it's there was a lag, and that's why we lag. were doing this. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. It worked twice. What? Really, really bad. The ice. Mm 
Oh, that was a good idea. Nice. Fourth. Ah, that sucks. If you lost because of that. Man, his DI on that was really, really bad. Alright, um... Yeah. There's not a lot of things to mention in this game. There's a lot of... There's, like, quite a few things I don't like about this. Overall, you did okay. You won the game. Not a bad thing. But, um... Well, I just want to talk about two things before wrapping up. Uh, Alright. Arrow in neutral is really, really important. Like, when you're in the situation where you send someone far away and you try to go for air and then, like, of course, it's going to get shielded. Like, even if it looks like it's not a bad, it's not a good situation, it is actually quite a really good situation, right? Because, the like, because Arrow does the perfect shield damage to get a shield break afterwards, right? That's why it's right. really good. So I want to talk about how important it is to hit Arrow neutral, back air, and fair. And I would say f field f field does the same thing. Those four moves deal the perfect damage to someone's shield to break it in the same in, in the next move. All right. So if you get like this is just talking about conditioning. If you get a fair tipper, if you get a backer tipper, if you get an arrow, or you get an f field, it is the perfect time to just try to go for a shield break, down air, down smash, whatever. It's it's a really good way to condition someone, right? Because I could see that all of these players that you were fighting had no idea that it could actually happen, right? And it's, there's still a lot of the players that don't know about it. But it's just a really good thing to do, right? Because now you're forcing someone to be careful about something that is not even there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And having that as a conditioning is insane for a match. So, um, yeah. Uh, learn how important those four moves are and learn how to punish it. Kind of like side B. Side B also works that way. This is lower, but it works that way too. Basically something that gives you a hit because people are too scared of shielding because you might get a shield break or and you get a shield break, right? Yeah. And, um, and the other thing I want to talk about is that like using arrow in this, in this matchup is it might not be a good idea or just like in someone that got a reflector because you might die. He could have killed you uh, when you did the, like the fully charged neutral B and this neutral B in this situation. So you just be really careful with that. Like you won, right. but that's still something I don't like because if he was a little bit smarter, he could have killed you here. He gotcha. like you were literally dead. So just be careful with that. On uh, yeah, that's it. All right. All right, man. Um, yep. That's all. And, uh, yeah, have a good night. Have a, right. have a good Christmas Eve in case you celebrate it. And, uh, yeah, have a good you rest well. of the year, man. You too. Take care. You too.